Coach Steven here with our Thursday workout. We're back with another gymnastics based workout, our third one. This time, still going to have some gymnastics strength involved, but gymnastics in and of itself is a pretty good workout anyway for burning some calories and staying in shape. So I figured we'd focus this time a little bit more on skill specific gymnastics. So we're going to jump right into it here. Two things on every event. Once again, there's going to be an easier and a hard ver harder version of everything that we're going to do. All right, so starting with floor. On floor, we're going to start with forward rolls for the easier option. Okay, reaching up, trying to touch your hands, trying to duck your head in and roll forward. Standing up without using your hands, okay? So I'm trying to roll, and when I roll, I'm trying to reach my hands out forward to give me the momentum to get off of my bottom onto my feet. Then I stand up without using my hands pushing on the ground at all. All right, we'll do, let's say five to 10 of those. All right, and then if that's too easy, you'll do the backward roll instead. Obviously you can do a backward roll right to your feet. Or you can try for the backward roll to a push-up position. All right, if you have a safe place to do it, like on a mat or something, you can work on straight arm backward rolls. I'm not gonna do it here because this floor is too hard. Uh, and as we talked about on Tuesday, you can always pull out a couch cushion like I've got right here, and you can do a backward roll off the edge of it, putting just your head over the edge and pulling your feet over, using that couch cushion to make it a little bit easier for you. That's number one on floor. Number two on floor, we're going to do our cartwheels. There's three levels of cartwheels for the beginners to be working on, which is just our basic put my hands down so I have my feet apart. I put my hands down, pointing away from my body, and jump my feet around to the other side. Okay? Then you can do the same thing trying to add a little kick, making sure you land one foot at a time. All right, this foot's in front, my left foot. So I want to land on my right foot first. So I'm going to add a little kick here, right, left. All right. So my left comes off the ground last and lands last. So it goes right off the ground, left off the ground, right on the ground, left on the ground. All right. And then as you get really good at that, we can start transitioning into full cartwheels. Make sure you have enough room in your house before you ever start trying anything like that. Okay. For the advanced kids, we also have two options. There's the cartwheel step in where you're going to do a regular cartwheel and try to bring your feet together at the end. You still come down one foot at a time. I'll try to give you a little better example here. So I come down on one foot, then the other, all right? Then for the more advanced, you're going to try to come down one foot, then the other, and land in a proper finish position for round off with your arms forward, back hollow, feet in front, pressing onto your toes so that your momentum takes you backwards like this. Notice that second leg snaps down quick after the first leg comes down to mimic the power that a round off has coming down, all right? Five to ten of those as well, all right? Then onto the floor, we're going to do our pommel horse stuff on the ground. So first thing is just, it's not going to matter what level you are because there isn't really a harder way to do this. We're just going to work on our cut sequence. So I'm going to go bring my knees up behind my hands. Then we're going to cut forward, cut forward, cut backward, cut backward. Okay? Then I can lead with the other leg. I can go right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right. I'm going to go ahead and just say to do 10 of those. So you can do five on each side. All right? And then the beginner option for the second thing is going to be our walk arounds. Okay. And then you can start to work on the different quarter positions. So just a jump to a quarter, jumping to a half. It's tricky when you go for the three quarter. And then you can go for the full. Okay. I want 10 to 15 circles, whether they're walking, quarter circles, half circles, three quarter circles, or full circles. Just keep working on circles. You can never do too many circles to get better. All right, and girls, 
The circles are going to benefit you too. That strength and ability to shift your weight around on your hands is going to do wonders for you on beam and bars. All right. Whew. I'm sweating. <laughs> All right. The next one is beam. Let me remind myself real quick. All right. So for the beginners, we have the half turn. I put one foot in front, one foot back. I like to turn to my left. So that means I put my left foot in front, all right? And then when I turn, I'm going to be on just my left foot on my tiptoe. But before I do that, I'm going to have to come up. So just to give you guys the idea, I pretend I'm holding a beach ball in this hand. And I'm going to bring both arms up overhead, hold the beach ball with both hands, and step down, okay? When I go up with my arms, I push up on my tiptoe and bring my foot all the way up to my knee, all right? It's a passe. So here, passe, step, finish. All right, then the next step would be to add a half turn to that. Okay, and then for the advanced ones, go to a full turn. Looking up on your toe, spinning all the way, step and finish. If you really want to show it off, try to get a kick out like that. All right, and boys, just because we don't do beam, doesn't mean it's not valuable to be able to turn on one foot. Lots of uses for being able to quickly turn, especially in transitions on floor when we're trying to get from one corner to the other in between our tumbling passes. All right. Then the next thing on beam is our split jump. So obviously you can just start with a basic split jump, trying to have one leg go forward, one leg go backwards, arms out to the side like so. Okay. But you can also go for the biggest one you can possibly do, especially for you competitive girls trying to get to that 180 split. I can't quite do it, <laughs> but you guys get the idea. And then for the really advanced ones, we're going to put that into a combo and do a split jump to a straight jump or a split jump to a sasone. So a split jump, straight jump is the easier one. So go out, straight. Okay, but we can really push ourselves with a split jump to sasone. Where you go out in the split, then split again, but land on just the front leg. Okay, one more time on that. Got a big split, same split, but only bring the one foot down. All right. So for the turns and the jumps, I want you guys to do 10 sets of each of those. All right, 10 turns, 10 jumps, or 10 sets of jumps connected. All right. Then we're on to the rings. So for the rings, we've got hollow rocks as the basic one. So what you do is you reach towards your toes to bring your shoulders and your head off the ground, okay? And then you can just rock back to your shoulders and back to your feet. Shoulders, feet, shoulders, feet. Okay, that's the basic one for the beginners at this, all right? For the more advanced kids, you try not to touch your feet at all. And you can try to Hold your arms over your head, like so. And then for the competitive level kids, I'd really like to see you guys doing that. But on three, go all the way to a candlestick. So you go one, two, candlestick. One, two, candlestick. Notice I'm bringing my arms to my side, just like I would bring the rings to my side. All right, so I need 20 to 25 hollow rocks from everybody, or you can do five to 10 sets of three hollow rocks, the candlestick for the most advanced ones. All right, then for the last thing on rings, pull out my chairs here, and we're going to work our LC hold. So I'm gonna put my hands down, and I'm gonna try to hold my legs straight out in front of me like so. Okay, turn a little bit so you guys can get a side view. I'm trying to keep my feet as high as my waist, or better yet, as high as my belly button. All right, so that covers our ring stuff. Then, let me remind myself, vault, we're going to do a hurdle with a rebound. So you just step forward, jump, and bounce. Okay. Better yet, try to have your arms down when you bounce and swing them up, okay? So I put my arms out to the side, I step, 
Then as I jump, I pull them back and swing them forward. So here, back, forward. Here, back, forward, all the way up. But here, back, forward, and up. Okay, the more advanced version is to make it bounce backwards. So as I step and bounce, I'm going to let myself travel backwards like that. Okay? And even more advanced is to have my feet go backwards, but to do what we call a, a counter rotation with my chest coming forward. So you'll see my feet go back, but my chest comes forward. Be careful. Make sure you have space. You don't crash into anything if you fall forward doing this. But this is good for teaching yourself to lean back and then reach in to a vault table to block off your hands. All right, the second thing on vault is going to be handstand blocks. So you can start on your knees and then just try to push off your hands like that. If that's too easy, try to get into a push up position. Try to make yourself bounce. Then you go into a slight kick, trying to just use the kicking off the ground to help you push, then you can aggressively drive it up to a handstand. Alright, I want about 15 handstand blocks, as well as about 15 of those hurdle bounces. Alright, then onto the parallel bars, we're going to do push-offs and push-offs with a hop. So, the basic one is just to push off, so you hold yourself up little swings back and forth, but then an aggressive push off in the back to a stick. It's always correct to get down in that back swing with an aggressive push. Okay, you can even mimic what we do in the gym as one of our testing skills where you push over to the side. Just make sure that the chair is sturdy and stable so that when you push off the side, it doesn't tip over. All right, then, oh, the more advanced version is to make that hop. This one is for the team kids that are starting to think about maybe doing front flips off of the parallel bars, where they're going to use that swing and try to push up in the air to a stick. Okay, don't go too big on the swing because the chair will fall over. Just be aggressive, pushing straight down. If I push forward, the chairs are going to tip forward. So I have to push straight down, and that's great because we want that push straight down for the front flip off the bars. If we push forward, we will actually travel backwards on the front flip, making it harder for us to flip all the way around before we fall anyway. So much better to be pushing straight down to get that bounce anyway. All right. Oh. <laughs> Forgetful me. There's another thing on the bars. So after you do about 10 to 15 of those hop offs, then we're going to do our partial press. This one, there's not really a higher and lower level one. It's just how far you go depending on your level. So beginners will just get in their L and try to push their bottom back behind them. While pushing their bottom behind them, they should try to lean their shoulders in front of them so they fall straight down. Okay. As you get to the higher levels, you start really trying to push your bottom up over your head. All right. Now, I can't do this with these chairs because my ceiling's in the way, and I wouldn't suggest doing this on chairs, but some of you guys have parallettes or large dumbbells in your house. I know some of you teen boys do, so you can use those as parallettes that you can grip onto on the ground where you can safely fall over and not have to worry about it, and you can try to press all the way up towards a handstand, which I'm touching my ceiling right there, so not going to happen in here. Alright, so yeah, for parallel bars for real this time, not just kidding. Alright, <laughs> uh, last one is the high bar. We're going to be doing our hollow to arch rolls. So what you can do is you can go hollow, get off your head and shoulders and your feet, come down, roll to your stomach and arch, and then roll back to your back, and follow, and roll, and arch, all right? That is one of the options that you can do, do that 10 times, 
or if you are more advanced, you try never to touch the ground with anything except your midsection here. So kind of your thighs up to your stomach or your lower back down to your lower leg or your bottom. All right, so I go hollow, roll through an arch, back to a hollow, and then go back the other way. Arch, hollow, arch, hollow. Okay, this is mimicking how we do a correct tap swing on the bars. When you're swinging on the bars, you're supposed to be hollow in the back swing, arch through the bottom, and kick back to a hollow in the front. So it's hollow, arch, kick, hollow, arch, kick. That sort of idea. So that's what we're doing down there. I want you guys to do about 15 of those. I think I forgot to mention the press attempts. Just do about 10 of those pike presses on the chairs. All right. We'll do about 15 of those rolls back and forth. Back and forth is one. All right. And our last thing, if I can remind myself here, oh, is going to be a drill for our calves. I call it a seal hop. So you're going to get down, hook your toes under like this. Don't point them under. Hook them like this, seal here, and then snap to a push-up position. Seal, snap to a push-up position. I'm not sticking my butt up. I'm bringing my chest in and correcting my shape real quick. All right, you can do about 20 of those. Or for you higher level kids, add some aggression to that bounce up to the push-up position so that your feet actually lift up into the air like so. Okay, so I'm literally doing a cast from the bars. Okay, about 20 of those. All right, so that is our gymnastics workout for this week. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Get us some videos of you guys doing the awesome gymnastics you're doing at home. Remember to get your parents' permission before you ever post anything online. And a bunch of you guys have been asking about this fan in the background. And if I'm so hot, why don't I just turn it on? It's just too loud, but I have to keep it in here, even though I'm not using it, because it's my only fan. And it's my biggest fan, so if it's not there, no one else is cheering for me. <laughs> All right. You guys have an awesome weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one.